on your market set and go now. Got, Got a dream, dream and we just know now. We're gonna make that dream come true, Suki. Doing Do it, it our way. way. There is nothing we won't try. No, never heard the word impossible this time. This time There's no stopping us. We're gonna, we gonna do, do it. it. On your market set and go now. <laughs> that we just know now. We're gonna make our dreams come true. In four, three, two, one. The Suki and Scott Show. It's musical. Magical. You guys, I nailed it. You're great. You ask great questions. You listen. You guys have such amazing energy. The Suki and Scott Show. In it our way. What's up, Suk? How are you? What's going on? Great, babe. I'm doing great. Weren't we just on last night? Seems like I we're like on. Feels like we're on a lot, no? Can I tell you something? I just put the last piece of food. I just shoved it. Today went really fast for me. I don't know about for you. Went really fast. I don't know about our audience. It went really right. fast. Well, you know what happened with <sighs> me? I, I had that periodontist uh, thing oh, today. Oh, yeah. Did you get the sweet air? No, no, not yet, Sue. But I was informed that I got some like a nice couple surgeries coming my way in, in April. Really? Oh, yeah, it's going to be great. But they do have the nitrous oxide tank. Um, <laughs> I had to listen to several. They have stories. it on standby, the nitrous oxide tank? Suk, it was one of those dentists, this periodontist. He's in his 70s. I had to sit through a, an hour worth of stories before mm -hmm. the guy got to the end. Then he's drawing me diagrams of teeth on a piece of paper. He's drawing me a diagram showing me where the bone is whittled away from the gum, Suki. It's going to be miserable. <laughs> I'm like, Doc, listen, can I talk after this surgery? Am I going to be able to talk? I talk for a living. I'm going to need to do it. He's like, oh, yeah, you're going to be fine. I'm going to be very gentle. Oh, well, Lorianne's like, Scotty, how are you feeling? He's going to be all right. Lorianne, what are you worried about? But he just got a diagram on what the dentist is yeah, going to no, do. Yeah, yeah, yeah he, drew, he drew it out on a piece of paper. We're good. Um, and then, you know, I got that second shot for the vaccine yesterday, and they say the stuff kicks in like, 24 hours later, Suk, I laid down on my bed for an hour and a half. You did I was today. Out like a, I was out like a light, like a light. I, I was so tired. But here I am, baby. We're ready to rock. We got an amazing show. Matthew Willig is here, starring in The Young Rock as Andre the Giant. Um, you know, Suk, I, I almost had the rock. Eye. He was going to surprise Matt. We were going to get him in here. That rock's in Hawaii. I, I sent them. I'm like, Rock, do me a favor, man. Come on, you pop on for a minute. Lots going on. He wasn't able to do it. But uh, listen, you know me as a WWE guy, um, you know, watching the young Rock. I know Rock personally. I've had some fun interactions with him. Uh, you know, Matt does a great job as Andre the Giant. Uh, and he's a former NFL guy. Suki's the guy's huge. He's in great shape. You're going to love him. Um, and then we have Ian Flanagan, a finished, you know, third, he was the top so three finalist in The Voice. What a voice. What a voice. Yeah, yeah. That yeah. Real raspy, manly yeah, thing yeah, going yeah, on. Yeah, I just, you know, very nice. Let's, let, you know what? Let's say hello to everybody. Go let's ahead, babe. Serve it up. We've got Pamela DeSeda, Von Burns, Pam Apolloni, Lorianne saying, How was your PTA meeting? Well, Lorianne, <laughs> uh, that was a great PTA meeting. My yes, daughter great. is going back to school. Um, so I'm very excited about this. And Scotty's like, that's, she's not going back very quickly. You know, I was like, no, but she's going back before the end of the year. So that's a good thing. I'll take, yeah, no, I'll take it. Take it uh, my it. son is going back to school, but then there's, um, a seventh grade seminar going on as we speak. Mm -hmm. So I'm like talking to these moms, hoping that they'll take some notes for me. So I, I, you know what? I, I want to split myself in half, but sometimes you just can't do it. I think a lot of working parents are like juggling the the gamut. Like so, I've been so, on pick up and drop off since four o'clock today. <laughs> listen, I don't care what you do. As long as you're in this seat at 730. <laughs> I am. I am. I am. I am. That's all I'm worried about. Oh. Um, I got a couple things for you before Let's we do uh, it. Serve it up. This was an article that caught my eye, Suk, in the New York Post today. 
Um, I thought you might get a kick out of this one. Rudy Giuliani's daughter, Caroline, graphically details why she loves threesomes. Makes her a better person, Suki. She's got a book I mean, called like, I, A Unicorn's Tale. Rudy's daughter is, <laughs> Rudy's daughter's in the threesomes. For some reason, we all needed to know that. <laughs> what, what is it about that? Like, see, I think there's something wrong with us. That was it. Vanity Fair that's printing this article called yeah. "A Unicorn's Tale." It's uh, "Unicorn's Tale: Three Way okay. Sex." I can't, I forget, I didn't get the rest of it, but she talks about how it makes her a better person, and she's totally into it. And all I could think about is Rudy with that, you know, with the with the uh, with the, the thing coming, the the, the the die melting down. Listen, I mean, it's which it's, you know it, I you know I saved <laughs> the last time. <laughs> That I'm just going to tell you, like, I, I, you know, I don't think any of us really care about her sexuality, but like the fact that she's Rudy Giuliani's daughter is what gets her article printed. <laughs> like if, Absolutely. like if our children wrote an article about sex and like nobody would print it, Scotty, nobody would care. Uh, so listen, I could open up my window and scream that I like to sit in hot tubs with seven. <laughs> nobody would care. Nobody would care about me doing that. Um, anyway, listen, Stoop, they got this uh, new show on NBC called Young Rock. God, look at how handsome he is. What a handsome yes. devil. For those of you who aren't familiar with The Rock, well, there he is, uh, international superstar. And, uh, you know, it's a, it's a sitcom about his life growing up as a kid um, and just really cool. So we're going to talk to uh, Matt Willig in just a few minutes. He's coming up uh, right at around 740, 741. And uh, what else? I had something else for you, Sue. Hold on. Let me see here. <laughs> I like the unicorn sex by Rudy Giuliani's daughter. Yeah, yeah. Rudy Giuliani's daughter. Um, everybody's talking about uh, Eddie Murphy's movie with Arsenio coming out, I think. Tonight. I am dying to see Coming to coming America. To you know that's going to be just off the chains. So I found online they were showing a couple different Eddie Murphy things. And here's a little mistake by the folks at uh, the Blu-ray DVD from 48 Hours. See, see what's wrong with this? Uh, <laughs> Nick Nolte is a cop. Eddie Murphy is a god. Yeah, I think they, they got the names wrong uh, under I, the pictures. That's hysterical. That's yeah. really funny. Yeah, and some guys on the radio before, I heard them talking uh, on the fan here in New York, top five, uh, or, or ESPN, top five Eddie Murphy movies, Suk. If you had to throw out top five. Speaking of movies, by the way, Matthew Willard's been in a boatload of movies. We're going to talk about that, too. We're going to play... The Matthew Willig synopsis game, Suk. You against him. We'll I'm see good. At remembering his own movies. But what about Eddie Murphy's top For five? For me, Trading Spaces. Trading Places. That's one. More Places. Trading Places. <laughs> sell, Mortimer. Sell. Mortimer, sell. Um, yeah, yeah. Pork uh, bellies. Beverly Hills Cop. Beverly Hills Cop. Okay. One and two. One and two. Were you like a Boomerang fan with Robin? I Gilles? love Boomerang. I right, mean, the crazy a, gnarly toes after that. Right, nobody right, wanted right. to have like gnarly toes. Yeah, that chick. A has young a Halle Berry. I mean, come <laughs> on. Young Halle Berry, Robin Givens. Robin, uh, uh, Robin Givens, gorgeous. I saw Robin Givens at a charity fund. Was it that movie that um, Mike Tyson fell in love with her? I think so. Yeah, yeah. Tyson, um, I saw her at a charity function recently, and I went up to her. I said, hey, Marcus. Remember that? <laughs> they were, what's her name? <laughs> hey, Marcus. And I went up there, and she just looked at me like I was a putz. Um, uh, but what? how so, about like um, da Daddy Daycare or yeah. um, right? some of those movies? Yeah, you know, I, I didn't really watch all the Daddy Daycare movies and stuff like that, but Definitely coming to America. Nutty yeah. Professor Shrek. Nutty his voice yeah, yeah. is, you know, uh, incredible. Oh, I, Norbit. And remember Norbit? Norbit. Yep, yep, yep. Nutty Professor was great. I think we're getting Arsenio soon too. I think uh, Sharon's getting us Arsenio. Mm -mm -mm. Uh, but yeah, it's a. Uh, and who was in Dream Girls? You know that, right? Yep, yep. Eddie and Dream Girls. I, Do you know what? Forty Eight Hours is a good one too. Forty Eight yeah, Hours with Nick Nolte. Yeah, I don't know how great this movie's going to be. I'm ho I got high. Oh, I think it's going to be pretty good. So I think I it's, it's going to be great. The only you thing know what? I saw this. Uh, I saw um, Howard Stern. I was listening to Howard Stern, and Arsenio was on Howard Stern. Yep, yeah, yep. Yeah. And and he was talking about our, uh, Howard was asking Arsenio, "Do you think he'd ever go back to stand up?" Eddie Murphy, that is. And he goes, "Listen, before the pandemic, I had him this close, and I said all the comics that are on." Uh, coming to America, 
would actually go on tour. And Eddie was this close, and we were going to call it Coming All Over America. <laughs> <laughs> That's pretty good. Coming All Over America. That's good. <laughs> That's very good. I like that. <laughs> um, Suk, well, listen, you know, you and I have been on doing this show for a year. We've had a plethora of celebrity guests on, some great moments. We got uh, Matt Willard coming up on the other side. We're coming back right after this. It's a Suki and Scott show. Fantastic flashback. So if he was average, I will be the, the orange lady. But because, you know, of his, you know, you went grapefruit. Um, yes, the grapefruit just fits his member. So that's really how the grapefruit came about. And as I was doing it, he was just telling me, like, it felt like I was, you know, performing sex and, you know, fellatio at the same time. And I was like, oh, wow. And I started telling people about that. And literally, it just, people had never seen anything like it. And so it branded me. So, yeah, thank God for grapefruit. <laughs> you can lose weight and still please your man. <laughs> I mean, so it's actually a toy, right? It's like it's meant to, you know, yes. obviously you've got the secret yes, um, to do this. So it's meant to be shared. So, yes. Can you help us with the secret? Um, well, the, the thing is, so with the grapefruit, what you want to do, make sure you warm it up and you want to roll it to get it nice and juicy. And then you cut both of the sides off. So you want to cut where the navels are mm -hmm. off. And then you literally will have a grapefruit that's going to, you know, of course, have a, and then you put a hole in the middle of the grapefruit, approximately the size of his member. And you just, and you, and that's pretty much all you have to do. Babe, do we have any grapefruits upstairs? <laughs> I have a grapefruit back there. Should I get it? Yes. Well, at least I got something else to do other than watch uh, Blacklist tonight, so. This is Scotty. Everyone's everyone's getting their hands on the grapefruit. Shelly, you can't do this. No. <laughs> She's unicorning through at the wrong time. She's like, yeah, yeah, grapefruit. <laughs> it's a Suki and Scott show. Fantastic flashback. Uh, remember the that woman movie? killed me. Like I was like. I'm I never looked at the grapefruit the same again. Never the soup. I've been eating them like crazy, though. It's unbelievable. <laughs> <laughs> I'm eating one grapefruit a day. You're like, you're like, uh, you're like Lara, Lara, grapefruit? Souk, one of the hottest shows on TV, Young Rock on NBC. Uh, Matthew Willig's playing Andre the Giant. I'm going to put up about 15 seconds from one of the trailers, hoping we don't get cut off from NBC on any copyright infringement. <laughs> But here's a little quick clip of uh, Matthew Willig as uh, Andre the Giant, one of the most legendary figures in all of professional wrestling. We'll bring in Matt on the other side. I have had one hell of a life. There's still so much that I have to share with the world. Oh, and I've got some pretty cool stories about Andre the Giant. Ah, uh, there he is, ladies and gentlemen. Woo! Matthew! Okay, let me just say right off the bat, I'm glad that you let in with that as opposed to leading in with the grapefruits. That's, <laughs> I didn't want to get let in by... <laughs> Matthew, trust me, I it took me a while to even just kind of figure it all out. <laughs> And, along the, and along, the, along the same line, Suki, I'm interested in your sex life, so if you wanted to keep that going at some point. We can... Matt, she had us, I think for a half an hour, she was tell, She has 57 different ways of performing fellatio. Please, your lover. And we were, uh, we, were, we, were, we, were, we, were, we were engaged in the whole thing. I'm yelling at my daughter in the other room going, turn this off, you can't watch it. <laughs> I thought this was a clean family show, right? So Listen, my daughter was coming to the shot. I was like, goodbye. You can't watch now. That saves me at least one conversation. Oh, my God. Matt, listen, do people call you Matthew or Matt, first of all? Uh, usually asshole, but I'm sorry. I shouldn't have said that. Um, <laughs> Matt, is, Matt is good. Matt is fine. Beautiful, man. Thank you so much for coming on. Listen, great things happening for you. I mean, listen, before this, Gotti, you look up your IMDb, you were in a ton of movies. We're going to go, we'll go over that in a little bit. But what was right. it like for you to get this call? You know, to be, I mean, obviously you knew who Andre the Giant was, I assume. I mean, here he is right here is Andre. Um, yeah, and when you were called to say, hey, we want you to play Andre the Giant, what was your initial reaction? 
you know, it's that it's that classic like, yay! Oh no. <laughs> <laughs> I've got to do this. Uh, it, it was it was incredibly exciting. Um, again, a little scary, you know, um, because there's there is some pressure with such an iconic character like Andre, yeah. uh, not only just performing as him, but you know, getting the voice down. Uh, you know, I, I gained I gained a lot of weight for the role, so there was just all kinds of things leading up to even getting on screen that that was attached to it that uh, that made it even more special for me. But I mean, it, it's perfect casting. I mean, if you think about Andre, he was just, I don't know how exactly tall he was, but you're like six, seven, six, eight. Am I correct about that? Depends on who's asking, but well, yeah, right now. Anyway, <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes the role requires me to be six, five. I'm also down that low, but yeah, I'm about six, eight. And I, and I, I typically weigh just under 300 pounds. I gained about 35 pounds for the role just because I needed that Andre Walk. That build, you know, that bulk, yeah, that heaviness, a little bit of that stomach, which I don't normally walk around with. But, uh, yeah, I mean, no one's going to be able to put that 7'4", uh, 450, 500-pound frame, you know, no one's going to replicate that. So I'd like to think that I was the closest to, to be able to do that. Yeah, wow. there you go. You look like you were a beast. Like, yeah, wow, look at this. showing things like that. <laughs> Scott yeah. loves to dig it up because Scott likes to put his side by side. Show him your your picture, Scotty. Oh, Matt, let Matt listen. She got, you, Matt, you got to see this. I have it. I have it right here. Look at that. <laughs> Look at that. It's from when I was shrink that. You should shrink that down to just the abs. You don't even. I know. It, <laughs> get rid of, right. This is me now. I'm working on it. Um, Matt, when you, when you listen to Andre speak, right, he almost, he's got yeah. that like marbles in his mouth yeah. type of, of talk, right? Yeah. Um, yeah. did it take you a while to get that down? Well, you know, it was funny. It was a process of kind of working with uh, a French dialect coach. So getting some of the, the, the Frenchisms around and then, yeah. And then sort of just, it's really a big tongue is what it is. And it's just that big tongue that you have to kind of be lazy with. You know, the, the, the hard thing was after we were done shooting all these, uh, I had to do all these ADRs for my voice because they couldn't understand it. <laughs> you know, I thought, wait a minute, that's, that's who Andre was. But, you know, again, when you're on TV, you want to be able to understand what I'm saying. So it, it, it took a little bit of a while. But again, I was really happy. Like first week into the Zoom, we were, we were in quarantine in, in Australia and we uh, were doing our table reads through Zoom, you know, because everybody was in quarantine. And, um, you know, uh, we got done and it was, I got an email real quick and they said, uh, the producers want to talk to you. I'm thinking, oh no, they hated it. And I wait about two hours and I get with them and they're doing a Zoom and, and, and I said, look, if you guys aren't happy, let's, they're like, no, don't change a thing. We loved it. So that was like right off the bat, they gave me the kind of the stamp of, of approval. And, and that was kind of nice because it allowed me just to kind of free up and, and be Andre. So does this... Does this play in three parts where you're early, Andre, like affecting the rock? I mean, give, give us some kind of body to this work. Yeah, I mean, especially for Andre, you know, there, there's a couple different time periods. And, and hopefully as the show goes along, even into maybe down the road into next season, uh, you know, they'll explore more. But yeah, there's kind of for me, I, I, I'm very simple with it. I, I liken it to Andre with the big hair and then Andre with the short hair. <laughs> <laughs> and. And so, you know, most of it's, uh, as you see there, you know, Andre with, with 10 year old Dewey, um, sort of in Hawaii times, sort of having more of an impact on, on Dwayne as a little boy and, and being that uncle Andre that, that, that Dwayne talks about. And then later on, as Andre becomes a little bit bigger and, and more of a, you know, well-known celebrity, um, we'll explore that a little bit. And again, you know, it's, I'm feeling like when I put the short wig on and do that, I feel like I even more transcend into, into sort of later Andre, which is really nice. There he is. There he is. That's the there it is. Short, right? That I mean, don't that that black thing is coming. That that uh, that's <laughs> how intimidating is it to put that thing on? Like, where does it all go? You know, I try. I try. <laughs> yeah, I tried it on uh, during the season. Um, and it's, you know, the vanity goes out the window quick. You literally, just have to say, you literally have to just say, this is who I am. I'm Andre. And that's sort of what you go with and you close your eyes. And you so just this is how go. women feel when they have to wear bathing suits. Like yeah. you just have to let it, you have to let it all go at, at a yeah. certain time. And yeah, you know, no, I, 
it's funny about you know rock is such a, a such a great guy in person such a nice guy uh, even when i tweeted out the promo you were coming on the first time he retweeted it and was so excited for your I success know. and having you on i mean just you know such such a nice guy um was it was it cool like that was he on set with you guys at all while you were doing this stuff unfortunately not you know he was in atlanta he was finishing up another film um you know, all his scenes are by himself. There's no real connection scene wise with all this stuff in the past. So, right. um, but he was on our zoom calls early on reading the scripts and, uh, you know, got to talk to us a lot about sort of his feeling about it and, and, and his excitement for us bringing the role to life. Uh, I then, uh, later on asked, uh, if I could talk to Dwayne about his real relationship with Andre and Dwayne again, just like today when he blew me off, <laughs> and didn't show up on your show. No, I'm, I'm joking. He uh, he sent me a really long uh, voice message, detailing probably better than I could have ever asked about his relationship with Andre and how that was and how special that was for him, you know, growing up. And and uh, so that that stuff, his attention to detail, his his thoughtfulness. Obviously, this is his story, you know. So. Uh, there's just so much love with it, and it's it's uh, it, it was easy to transcend that, and you see that through all the characters. I think it's starting to kind of really pick up. Yeah, listen, no, yeah. I love you because you started your career with, with my favorite football team. I'm a New York Jets fan, oh, diehard. This is the Jets family. I apologize to everyone. <laughs> Yeah, that's it. Fourteen years in the NFL, not too shabby, man. And one Super Bowl win with the Rams, right? Super Huge. Bowl. Yeah. And um, you lost one with the uh, what was it? The Panthers. The Panthers. Uh, but hey, listen, it's it's better to have loved than lost, and not. <laughs> Absolutely. Off, right? And you know what? I tell people it's funny. Uh, I tell people I had more fun with this, the, the the Carolina Panthers team than I did. You know, it, it, even though we lost at the end, I had more uh, regard for that team and that uh, season than I did actually with the Rams. So there's more to it than just the ring. Yeah. No, so when you were yeah, playing. When you were playing football, were you thinking, because I got to imagine that football players know at some point that there's an end to something. It's coming down. Were you thinking, well, you know, I'm going to dig deep and this is something has always been my passion, acting. I'm going to take it. And I, when this is all done, I'm going to go in that in that realm. Were you thinking that way or did it just sort of snowball in a different direction? A little bit of both. You know, I obviously I knew my career was coming to an end. What I had done is I was hosting some radio and TV shows uh, on the different teams I was playing for and got comfortable in front of the camera and thought, you know, and, and used my natural sort of uh, comedy. Exuberant confidence. It. There you go. Yes, all that stuff. And I, I got with an, ex, uh, 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 an agent who dealt with a lot of ex-athletes. And I started doing commercials before I even retired. And I had success, you know, my first – couple of years I was still playing ball so it was one of those things when I when I ended up uh, retiring it was a nice just sort of transition and roll over to let's see how far I can go with it let's see if I'm any good at all you know because it's this is this is a business where you can get you can get flattened pretty quick and you know yeah. right away whether or not you've got any chops at all and so uh true it's worked out the, you did uh, great. the show That's is true. called it's it's young rock Tuesdays at eight on NBC uh, Matt Willig plays Andre the Giant. Uh, you know, Andre, one of the, uh, you know, he's the on the Mount Rushmore of every, every wrestling fans, whatever company you like, every wrestling fans, Mount Rushmore. Andre's yeah. on there. Um, Matt, you've been in, you know, this isn't the first time, obviously, you've acted. You've been in so many movies and TV shows, and the ones that crack me up are like the iCarly's, you know, because my <laughs> daughter watches that still. Um, <laughs> You know, Malcolm in the middle, everybody hates Chris. Even Young and the Restless, man, right? Yeah, yeah. The the, t the, the kids' shows were funny because my daughters were of that age, you know. And so I was – every week I'd, you know, drop my kids off at school and I'd hear one or two parents going, if I have to hear your freaking name again from yelling <laughs> – my kid yelling in the other room going, look, there's Mr. Willie. And they're like, I'm tired of you being on these shows. But, you know, it came at a perfect time because my kids got a little bit of benefit of, of seeing me do some of those things that – was really cool. That's so great, man. I noticed yeah. we, we are the Millers uh, with my girl, Jen Aniston. If you can give me your number after the show, I'd love it. <laughs> I'll um, give you half of it. You give me, yeah. But you, uh, <laughs> yeah, you, you they got you. They always got you playing the, these tough guys, these big guys. And, um, 
you know, is that something where you feel you're you're being typecast? I mean, obviously you're you're a big you're a big guy. Yeah. Um, yeah. you know, but I'm sure there's there's going to be roles for you where you're like the big guy who's really just the big softy, right? <laughs> I've tried to walk into auditions on my knees just to sort of fool them <laughs> a little bit, but no, it, it comes with the territory. You know, I, I it's not like I'm six two or six three. You know, I, I walk in a room and it's it's a giant, especially in the business. So. Early on, obviously, I took whatever I could get, and I and I, I didn't mind playing the bad guys. And, and sort of my goal all along is to kind of inch myself into playing, you know, guys with a little bit of character. Uh, more I was looking enough, I got on NCIS, and I was looking enough to play a guy who was a Mensa character. Mm-hmm. Well, yeah, there you go. You know, and, uh, <laughs> and so that's that's the goal. You know, and that's kind of the nice thing about right now. Uh, some of the things that they're saying about my my portrayal in, with Andre is that it's you know. There's a little bit of meaning there. There's some, there's some soulfulness as it's been called. Yeah, which is always nice because I mean that's more my personality. You know, I'm tired of staring people down and giving them that look like you know <laughs> I'm going to kill you. So <laughs> let me ask you a question because my kid's really big. I don't know if he's going to be six eight big, but he's right. big for like an eleven year old. Um, so I, I was curious: were you always sort of guided towards? playing professional sports just because of your build and who you are? I mean, by nature? I'm the fifth of six boys. Whoa. So all my brothers were really good athletes. The, the interesting thing is the, the, the oldest is the, it, I'm sorry, yeah, the oldest is the shortest, and then we <laughs> go like this. So, you know, I was obviously the biggest, and but, I, but probably, to be honest with you, one of the lesser talented in my family. <laughs> so I was a big, I was a big basketball guy and I really didn't know football was for me and uh, just sort of worked that way. I wasn't sure if I was going to go play basketball in college or, or football. Long story short, you know, I think it worked out, but yeah, I think ath- athletics was always in our family. It was just a question of how far, you know, we were going to take, we're going to take it. Were you the only yeah. one that went professional? That's what I want to know. Do you have those bragging rights? <laughs> uh, Certainly 14 years for sure. But my little brother came on as a quarterback uh, out of Rice University. He, he actually oh, came to the cool. New York Jets. He came to the Jets one season, uh, didn't make it, but he, he was with me for about three or four months. It oh, was my God, really that must cool. have been amazing. It was really cool. Uh, I got to put an M in front of my willing name just in case anyone, <laughs> you know, it was cool. All right, Matt, listen, well, you have been in uh, a, a ton of things, right, including right now playing Andre the Giant on, on Young Rock on NBC. I put together a little five movie synopsis quiz for you, as we do often here on the show, to see if actors who've been in a lot of things can remember what the hell they were in half the time. Some do very well, some don't. Suki's been studying up on you. (laughs) Anything anything you can't get, she might be able to help you with. So if you need need to phone Suki on an answer, you let me know. I got five of them for you. My daughter's right off off camera. She's ready to help me. She can help you. Okay. I'm going to give you this. Let me. It's just a, a one paragraph synopsis of each movie. You let me know what movie it was that you were in. Okay. okay. And then I go for the steal. If if you can't get it, Suki has been studying and and she'll help you. Here's the first one. A baseball loving millionaire helps three inept nerds form a baseball team to compete with the meanest bullies in the little league. Bench warmers. Nicely what done, movie. my friend. You my are one for love one. It. Should I wait till you're done, or can I interrupt you? <laughs> never, Matt, never, never interrupt, never interrupt you. Never, never interrupt, interrupt you. It took me a long time to put this together. Okay. Uh, <laughs> here's the next one. Crazed Killers, Baby Firefly, Captain Spaulding, and Otis Driftwood unleash bloody mayhem after escaping from prison. What movie? Three from, Three from, from Hell. Three from Hell is the right answer, my friend. Look at you, Suki. It's a Rob it. Zombie flick. Remember when yes. we interviewed Rob Zombie? What an interesting man. Yeah, yeah. He is a, he's a smart guy. But, yeah. smart. He is a, he, but he's out there a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> Aren't, they Aren't they all? Aren't they all? Two for two, my friend. After a priceless Apache war mask is stolen from an Indian casino, a host of criminals descends on a small town in hopes of claiming the stolen treasure. What's the movie? I played the Indian in correct. Uh, uh, Guns, Girls, and Gambling. That oh. is the correct answer, my friend. Who's the young lady yeah. on the front? Um, Remember her name? Oh, I can't think of her name. That looks like- you got Christian Slater there, Dane Cook in the background. 
Gary Oldman. Gary Oldman. Hey, come on. <laughs> yeah. Gary Oldman. <laughs> Gary, I didn't even recognize Gary. Wow. Yeah. That's wild. Yeah, that, was, that, was, that was a lot of fun to do. Helena uh, Madsen. Madison? Helena, Helena Madsen, yeah. Helena, yeah. Okay. Here we go. Two more. A relationship expert, Matthew Taylor, is on a book tour when he falls in love with a woman who cares, uh, calls him out as a fraud. The, oh, the pick apart. No. Um, the name the name of the book that he writes is the name right. of the movie. Right. Um, oh, man. See, if I didn't have a little bit of concussion type answer, <laughs> then, then it wouldn't be real. <laughs> I believe I believe Bill Bellamy was in the movie. Oh, we love Bill. I played a Russian with a seriously bad Russian accent. Um, <laughs> I forget. Ah, the bounce, the bounce, the bounce back. back. The bounce back. The All right, bounce last back. one. We'll see if you can go four for five. Make make it eighty percent. Here we go. All right. After a Neanderthal hunter, Zed is exiled for eating a forbidden fruit. He and his buddy leave the village on a journey through history. Name the movie. Year one. Year one. Yep. You are correct, sir. Little Jack Black action. That that was a lot of fun to shoot. That was nice a lot of fun. That's what actually the, heck the is movie. Jack Black like. Oh my god! Just as crazy and nutty as you could possibly imagine. But again, <laughs> just such a sweetheart. You know, I had Harold Ramis, Jack Black, and Michael Sarah wow. all having guitars in our in our tent waiting to shoot. All playing guitar, just riffing and singing, and I'm like, I'm stealing right now because I'm just watching it all. <laughs> you know, it, it, it was fantastic. Wow, unbelievable, Matt. Listen, man, thank you so much for coming on, ladies and gentlemen. It's Young Rock. He plays Andre the Giant. Young Rock on NBC. It's Tuesdays at eight. The show is just, of course, Rock does it. He's behind it. It's critical acclaim. And listen, the guy, he had a crazy life. And uh, this part of his life, they'll make a movie about one day also his biggest, you know, biggest superstar in Hollywood life. So um, it doesn't Matt, seem to be slowing down at all. So uh, no. he's, he's the best man. He's sipping his tequila. Yeah. yeah he's, got, he's got tequila now, the whole deal. Um, listen, man, keep it going. Uh, it's not easy playing uh, this guy right here, but uh, you're doing a great job, That's man. Great. A great job. Thank you, guys. I appreciate that very much thanks for having me on so thank nice so to much. meet you matt congratulations thank thanks guys take care buddy Go to your family. All, right. all right hope hope to be back soon okay Absolutely. thank you bud cool but wow what a great so, guy what a, what a star yeah star yeah. good looking football player he's a beast he's six eight i mean come on <laughs> so if i could grow about seven inches Scotty, what, would you have played professional sports if you had that ability to, like, that stature? Uh, well, Suk, I was a baseball player. Uh, I was pretty good. <laughs> pretty good. In Oswego? You know how Al Bundy scored four touchdowns in one yeah. game at Polk High? I'm one of those guys, Suk. But um, anyway, you yeah, know, what What a great guy. What a great show he's got. He just a, seems wonderful, right? He just seems a, wonderful, nice talented, good family. He's probably a great husband, good kids. God bless him. He's one of those giant men who's just, you know, just a, a giant a among here. men. Suk, listen, we got Ian Flanagan's in the house. He's coming up next. Uh, finalist voice season 19. The guy's got an amazing voice. Wait till you hear him. He's fantastic. Uh, he's coming up in just a minute. Uh, we're coming back right after this, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, Rock, Rock, I don't know if you did that the right way. If you smell la 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 you forgot that part. I'll let you do it one more time. Come on. <laughs> Listen, I came all the way from Bergen County to hear you do that. It's interesting that the part you want is the... Uh, hmm. <laughs> all right, you got Very it. interesting. Hmm. Okay. <clears throat> if you smell it all, you happy? Nice. What the rock is cooking? Nah. You got out of here. He is so good. Sook, do you know that that 
that was uh, like five, six years ago, WrestleMania 29 press conference. Do you know that him not playing, a, if he didn't play along with me right there, I think I would have been fired from WWE. <laughs> <laughs> when somebody told me backstage that when I was doing that, Vince, who was standing, Vince McMahon, who was standing backstage, was his eyes lit up like he was about to kill me. Because, you know, you go off script with anything, you you know, that doesn't really happen. Right. So the fact that Rock played along and the crowd loved it and the Rock went along with it, I walked off stage when we're done and I see Vince. He goes, hey, great job with the Rock. That was good stuff. <laughs> and I had heard that as I started telling Rock to come back, he was ready. He looked like he was ready to kill me. Ready to kill you. <laughs> but since it went over okay, we were good. I was like, ah, oh, thank you, Lord. <laughs> But uh, yeah, it tells well, you what it, it tells you what a great guy the Rock is like. To, oh, you know, yeah. to create moments and like you know he knows he knows how to entertain. He knows how to do it. He, and he does it so well. Yeah, I was nervous guy. for you. I was like, holy that, crap, is this guy? Can, oh. Not only that, but you had the owners of the Jets and Giants sitting there, players from both teams, because it was all at MetLife Stadium. You know, it was really. I was like, oh God, Rock, please, please come back and do this. <laughs> but um, listen, speaking of entertaining. Ian Flanagan's coming up next. Uh, this guy really blew him away on the voice. Souk, take a listen. We'll bring him in on the other side. The sun is cold and rain is hot. I know. I've been that way for all my time. And forever on he goes through the circle fast and slow. I know. Stop, I wonder And I want to know Have you ever seen the rain? And I want to know Have you ever seen the Man, oh man, so Ian, good, that, looks, Ian. that looks hey, a little too easy, bro. A little too I know. easy for you. How are you doing? Can you hear me? Yeah, yeah can, can you hear, hear us? Okay. Yeah, thank you so much for having me here tonight. It's great to meet you. Wow, well, listen, man. Now you are you're act. You're not too far from us. You're right up the uh, road in in uh, the Hudson Valley, right? Ah, uh, well, that's that is my hometown. So I'm from the Hudson Valley, from Sorgates, New York. Right now, we've been living in uh, Fort Worth, Texas, for. A oh, okay. Now. You're in Texas now. Okay, yeah, we're in Texas. That's great, man. Listen, well, they're now. opening everything up in Texas. <laughs> I know. I know. We could talk about it all night. <laughs> oh my God! I'm like, I don't know. I think I'd still wear a mask a little bit. I think I would. Yeah. Well, you know, it's um, it's a hard, it's a hard ethical <laughs> matter to talk about. You know. We'll figure. You know what? I just I just say one day at a time. We'll figure it out. One but listen, when Blake Shelton calls you a once in a lifetime uh, singer, what is what does that mean? Like, how does that compute in your head? You know, for me, I was just so honored to be a part of the auditions in general. For any kind of reaction like that, I wasn't expecting anything. I was just grateful to be there, and for him to say something like that really meant the world to me. And um, you know, he's always kind of encouraged me to just pursue my originality. So that's kind of what I took from it. But I really, you know, nothing but grateful, really. Yeah, no, listen, you, your whole story is amazing, bro. We'll, we'll, we'll talk, you know, we'll, well, you know, while we're on The Voice, let's talk more about that. What were, you know, you made it to the, to the what was it, the final three, final, right? Final. The, Top three, yeah. And, and what were what were some of the songs that you sang throughout the show? Um, well... I'm trying to make sure I don't have an echo for you here. No, uh, you're good. Okay, you're good. cool. Yeah, no, I um, my, one of my favorites that I got to sing was "To Make You Feel My Love." Uh, it was kind of a different version of one of Bob Dylan's songs that I got to do. Yeah, wow. I got to sing um, "Seen It in Color" during the finale, and also by uh, Jamie Johnson, who's amazing. And that song. Do is you know? Do you know what's funny? I've seen it in color. My wife and I love that song. She got me into it like two years ago. 
Uh, Jamie John, you should have seen it in color. Yeah. What a, what a <laughs> great tune. Dude, do me a favor. Give me give me a little acapella of that, like, because it's such a great tune. It's like, a, you know, songs don't oh, tell yeah. stories anymore these days. This song, like, tells the story. I like of, the chorus. Uh, I don't know. I haven't sang all day, but it's like, if it looks like we were scared to death, like a couple of kids just trying to save each other. You should have seen it in color. Oh, man. God, Ian, you just opened your mouth, and it's like magic. What the hell? Jesus. Oh, thanks. It's all broken up in here. I don't know. <laughs> Jeez. <laughs> Wait, did you always have, like, were you always in your low register? Always? You know, when I was a kid, obviously, it was higher. And then, um, to be honest, I just, I started gigging when I was 17. I lived a pretty different kind of lifestyle and I think just 10 straight years of late nights and uh, a lot of a lot of singing kind of broke it up a lot for me so I, I get it I get it yeah that's great man and listen you you know I was reading a little bit about you it said you started songwriting at a but when you were 11 years old yeah yeah uh, so at 11 years old what songs are you writing Man, when I was 11, so my mom and I used to play this game where we'd drive all the time and she'd be like, you know, oh, I see a bug and then it was a slug and just kind of like making rhymes <laughs> all day. And it really got me into um, just making these tiny little kid songs. And I do have a four track recorder somewhere in my parents' basement that has <laughs> uh, my first masterpieces as a little kid, but um, not very good songs. I'll be honest. They're just not marketable. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's great. And 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 another story I saw was, you know, you had a, a, a bad car crash yes. when you were younger. And after the crash, you had this little epiphany. You guys sold everything and you took off. You went on the road. Yeah. Well, you know, my my fiance, Ayla, for that story, she was working a job full time, also managing my career. And I was touring by myself at the time. And she was, we were working as hard as we could, trying to just get by in, in New York. You know, it's expensive up there. And yeah. she, she got in an accident, a car T-boned her, and both cars were totaled. And she ended up having to have a L4 and L5 spinal fusion surgery. Ooh. Ooh. And we just kind of saw how fragile life is, how short this life is, and how easily you can be replaced in this world. And um, we had always wanted to tour together, but it just pushed us to after she healed. We were like, you know, what, let's do it. We're going to sell everything and buy a motorhome that we can. And we're just going right. to do it ourselves, you know? So is, is so are you guys, because I see on the Instagram, you guys have the motorhome, your daughter, your family. Like, are you still doing that? Are you, I'm in are it you right still now. kind yeah. of? Yep, that's the motorhome. <laughs> I, I love it. Oh, that's fantastic. <laughs> now, let me ask you a question. Has that brought you guys closer together? I mean, has that like really kind of. Or do you hate yeah. each other by now? Or do you hate each other? Because I couldn't imagine being next to my children for that long. <laughs> oh, my gosh. It's such a weighted question because we obviously love each other so much. And here's the only thing I'll say. We have a 24-foot motorhome. It's not like a big home. Like, I'm touching all of it, you know? And um, <laughs> is, it, is this the one? Yeah, this that's it. That's, that's it. it. So we actually, we actually just bought a truck today, and we're um, going to be upgrading to a slightly larger trailer. Because we're continuing the tour for another two years at least. And wow. um, so we're sticking together. So we're, we're staying through it. And, you know, it does bring you together as a family. We live an alternative lifestyle, but it really lets you have a different perspective on the world. And the thing about this country is that every hundred miles you go, it's completely different mindsets, yeah. everything. And um, you just it's a really beautiful way to see the country. So I it, always it has wanted to do together. that. I never I had the know. balls to do it. How's that? My parents, did that. yeah. Well, my, my my dad retired. My parents did it. Got the RV, drove cross country, Vegas, you know, uh, South Dakota, all over. It's just great. I'd love to do it. Um, you know, I would assume that when you know you're up on stage singing with a Blake Shelton, uh, and you're doing a little duet with him, or he joins a song for you guys. That's forget about trying to win the voice. I would assume in that moment, that's a dream come true for you, right there. Oh, yeah. There's no words, man. You know, there's no words to really describe the process. Um, I never was looking for this in my life. I was just a songwriter. I never considered myself in the vocalist category of either American Idol or The Voice. And um, to find myself in those rooms with these people, it really, I was shocked, but also 
finding out how humble and down to earth everybody is, you just you feel good and you're around like minded people. So it's not this out of world thing. It actually just feels really comfortable and you you got to be present and just enjoy it and know what a gift it is in the moment, you know? Yeah. I got to imagine, and, and, and Scotty and I have had the pleasure of interviewing a lot of big celebrities. I feel like the bigger that they are, the more down to earth they yeah, are. They, have, they don't have a lot of wranglers, people that are around them. <laughs> Hold on for a second. You know, let me go through the PR and ask the question. You know, I feel like, I, I feel like Blake Shelton's the guy you could probably hang out with in the backyard and have a hamburger. <laughs> oh yeah. Everywhere I go, I was actually just, he, he hooked me up with a old red show up in Oklahoma um, a week and a half ago. And every single person that has a Blake story has a story of Blake, you know, coming around, sitting down, just hanging out. And it's like, he's such a down to earth guy. You know, he's just that way. Yeah. Love no, it. it's great. Dude, do you, uh, you feel like singing a little bit? Oh, uh, sure. I got some, you know, luckily since I live in my motorhome, I got um, <laughs> kind of a few guitars. <laughs> By the way, where's your wife? Where is your wife? I want to know. Is she standing right there? She's out in the truck right now. She's giving me some food. <laughs> She's we like, got, I got to get out of here for this. We gotta, right? Yeah, we got to get Kamea some dinner. Usually <laughs> we have so many. We'll have interviews and Kamea will be right here. This is her bed. And then it will be there. And I'm just like, you guys, we're going to be quiet. <laughs> I, <laughs> I love it. Fun. I love, what, do you, what do you feel like singing? Oh, well, um, I could sing you something. A new song is coming out soon. Or I could sing you guys something off the show. What do you, what do you think? Whatever you want. Whatever you like, man. Whatever you like. Do give us something. If you want to give, give us you... something a little bit and then we'll take you know something like a cover sure yeah i'll give you a couple um well not back we can hang out you know but um let me know is how's it sound is it okay Perfect. Yeah, it sounds good so i wrote this song this is a song called through the darkness and i was just writing it based off of um kind of scrolling through the internet you ever go through uh yep. instagram or anything and all of a sudden something just really like, really hits you and you just like start getting sad yeah, <laughs> no. yeah. I, you know it's a sad time in the world and something about the high school kids not being able to graduate with their class like hit me and i was just it's that first time in your life where you're really signifying the end of a huge chapter and uh so i just wrote this song so it's kind of for the class of 2020 really that's great i was going to play that one i'm glad i didn't i'd rather hear you do it live oh cool yeah you can play it too i'll play <laughs> something else but um go, go yeah. ahead you, you do it go ahead all right cool Long time coming and running from the life you caught your own. No bags packed, no map, just anywhere but where you're coming from. You've been dying, trying to be like and be loved by everyone. It's alright to not belong. It's alright to be alone. It's alright to be a dancing after all the music's gone. Cause your body holds a soul. It's older than your bones and it's tragic. But don't get lost out in the past with the life you could have had. No, that's tragic. And it hurts to let it go. But keep both eyes on the road and don't look back. Just push on, push on, push on through the darkness. The hardest part of this life is losing love and letting go. Lies can build a kingdom. What good is the crown if you're alone? So your life you've known it, but now you're starting to believe. It's alright to not belong, and it's alright to be alone, and it's alright to keep on dancing after all the music's gone. Cause your body holds your soul, it's older than your bones, and it's tragic. Don't get lost out in the past with the life you could have had. No, that's tragic. And 
it hurts to let it go, but keep both eyes on the road and don't look back. Just push on, push on, push on through the darkness. And go. You push on, push on, push on through the darkness. Your body holds a soul, it's older than your bones, and it's tragic. But don't get lost out in the past with the life you could have had. No, that's tragic. And it hurts to let it go, but keep both eyes on the road. And don't look back, just push on, push on, push on through the darkness. And go. It's alright to not belong. It's alright to be alone. It's alright to keep on dancing after all the music's gone. You are just like magic. Oh, I don't thanks, know. Wow. I appreciate you. God, Nicely wow. Done, what a Nicely. freaking voice. Yeah, oh, thank wow. you. Some days it's there. Some days it's like. <laughs> <laughs> but you know what? I love that oh, that, got gravel that gravel to, to a man's right voice. Now. I just think it is just so good because nowadays it feels like everything is just so. I don't know. It just feels very light. Just you very, know, very light. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that's honestly, I was um, I was shocked when I got through the voice. I've always kind of thought my voice was a little too damaged sounding to do something like that. So yeah, it's, it's nice that it's open. What was the story with uh, with you and Kelly? What was going on there? Was she she was flirting with you or something, or what was the deal? There? Oh, Kelly's just so sweet, you know. There's nothing <laughs> biased. She's just she's just super funny and she's cool, you know. It's uh, <laughs> she's just playing around all the time. But that's that's what I love about her because she's got such a just a vibrant personality, you know. Bubbly. When you're there, you're like, mm -hmm. Yeah, she's bubbly. Great. She's awesome. She's just lighthearted. So, what, do you have a record company that you're promoting other artists with your wife? Okay, yeah, Ayla and I, what we did is me being a solo artist way before The Voice. That's why I've been doing my whole life. I'm going to do it till the day I die. You know, being an artist, I was um, I was very painfully aware that you're not going to make a lot of money, you know, and uh, but that doesn't stop you from having to spend top dollar to make a record. So what we were trying to do is start a company where we could help people kind of get like the press kit to get the shows you need to make the money to get in the studio, to hire the videographer, to make your content, to get your fans. So yeah. basically what we want to do is just teach people, teach artists, whatever music, visual artists, how to kind of just be self-sustainable, like work with us like once or twice, then hopefully you never work with us again. Cause you're doing your own thing. That's kind of, it wasn't really a, it was more of a passion project than to try to. Well, I think that's great. A, I think that's great because it's kind of like, here's the one, two that I've learned that you might need to put into play for you to make your dreams come true. I mean, I think that's fantastic. Yeah. And the tools are out there for everybody and they're affordable to certain degrees. But then there's also another realm that you need to get in for high fidelity, which it does take a, strate a strategy to get there. And that's kind of yeah, what we were might. trying to do is help people build the strategy to get to there. So are you going to Blake and uh, uh, Gwen's wedding? <laughs> uh, they haven't hired me for the cocktail hour yet, but um, <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. I just wish they were. <laughs> Why all not? I heard they need a magician for the cocktail yeah. hour. Yeah, I'm working on that. <laughs> no, no, they, um, they were just such a, it was such a blessing just to meet them. You know, I wish them all the best. Cool. So great. Yeah, listen, it's something you'll never forget. You, you I caught another song of yours um, called Give Me Color. Uh, oh, yeah. I want to play about a minute of right here because I really thought it was cool the way you were, you were you were kind of drumming on the guitar as well. You were you were bopping. Oh, with thanks! It. I appreciate you liking that song. Actually, take a listen. you 
lucky Maybe 75 Most spend a lifetime Dying in fear Alive Nice. Beautiful. Nice. Good nice, stuff. Jeff. Do you want, can you do, um, uh, the? I just went out of my head, the Bob Dylan tune that you did on, uh, on, the, on the show? Sure. I, um, I'll, be, I'll tell you a little secret about me. I never know how anything's going to go. So. <laughs> okay, man. That's, that's, the, all... that's, the, that's the good part about this show. It doesn't matter, man. Oh, if yeah, work... man. Well, that's the beautiful <laughs> thing about music. It's only meant to be three minutes. So, how bad could it ever be? You know, right? Unless, <laughs> unless you're uh, stairway to heaven. Oh yeah, I um, I don't take that request. Don't <laughs> mind me. I, I just got a tune really quick. What was? What's the title of the song? I just, I just lost it. To make you feel my love. To make you feel my yeah, great, great song. Yeah, I got through a certain section of the show in the knockouts. <laughs> And um, the music director called me, and you know, I've been told the whole time I was on The Voice, they're like, Ian, you know, this is the show's called The Voice, not the guitar. So I, um, <laughs> I would bring all these arrangements, and I was like, and it's like, it's not about that stuff. So um, yeah. I didn't get to do a few of the things I really wanted. But the music director called me after that, and he was like, Ian, you know, he's just such a kind guy. They're all so good. And he was like, man, I'd really love to see what you do if we just kind of give you a little bit of free reign to make an arrangement. And um, we decided to try to make you feel my love by Bob Dylan, which was his suggestion. And I kind of took Adele's version and put a lot of her vocal lines wow. to in inspire the guitar part. That'd be great. And, um, yeah, so it was, it was really cool. And by the way, every single time that I was on the show, my bags were packed. I was like, this is it. I'm having a great time. <laughs> I'm out of here. Fine. If I'm heading home, everybody's amazing. It's all good. And I just was so grateful to get to make an arrangement on the guitar and record it for that's now on Spotify. So, but this is it. I'm going to just wing it a little bit, make an intro. Go ahead. Go ahead. Like me, I could 
can make you happy, make your dreams come true. There is nothing I would not do. Walk to the ends of the earth for you. To make you feel my love. To make you feel my love. You are just amazing. Jesus, Lord. Everyone's like, saying, all our viewers are like, can you could just imagine him in an arena? Just, wow. Well, yeah. if I, you should, let's book one, everybody. <laughs> no, but, well, I can't see everybody who's um who's watching, but thank you all for tuning in. I appreciate the kind words. They, yeah, they just nice. love it. Uh, uh, your cousin says, Danny Rose Meek says, I love you, cuz. <laughs> love, love, love. Your version. Oh, thanks, cuz. I'm sorry about your car door. That's all. <laughs> <laughs> and other fans are just like Cynthia Chapin, Philippine Richardson. They're all just saying, love you, love you. Really, really good, Ian. Really. Oh, thanks, everybody. Lots of fans. Oh, cool. Well, thank you, guys. Yeah, really nice, bro. Listen, great job, man. Ian, thanks so much for coming on. We'll let every let your rest of your family come back into the RV there. This is Ian, really, what, really what, is your next, what is your next step? Are you going to, like, you know, be be doing more music now that things are sort of opening up a little bit? Uh, you know, for me, I am a musician that is touring right now and I'm doing socially distanced events and it's just how I survive. It's how I make my living. I don't have another way. And um, we are just, you know, being very, very careful, as careful as we can be. And it's it's been working out so far. Everybody's been listening and, you know, following the rules of it. So it's been good. And that's we're still doing shows and we're in Texas for a while, but we're we're still traveling. We're going to be on the road for years, so we'll be here. All right, we love you. I can't wait to I can't wait to play that little snippet of uh, the the J what Jamie Johnson. Oh yeah, man, that's such a fun <laughs> song. I'm so glad you brought that up, though. Yeah, it's good. I said, Grandpa, what's that? This bitch <laughs> you great. got it, man. I'll play the guitar if you want to sing oh, it. Oh, dude, I. I, I it's a great tune. I, you know, she got me hooked on all, all the country stuff, and it's just, oh yeah, it's beautiful imagery. Yeah, it's great, great. Um, listen, man, thank you so much for coming on. Continued success. You come back again, man, later on. You know, when when you're out there touring, we'll promote whatever you got going, and awesome. um, you know, we'll, we'll we'll you got friends for life now, my friend. Thanks, hey, Ian. Same here, and you know, all all everybody you're having on, we all really appreciate you guys having a platform for us to come on and share this stuff with. So thank you guys, and I hope you, I wish you all the best this year. Dude, Absolutely, enjoy. right back at you, Ian. All right, take care. Take care, bud. Thank you. Bye, Ian. Say hello to your family. I will. Take care, boss. Wow, Sook. Holy Telling God. you that guy is just money. He's I magic. Mean, he was he was amazing with that guitar, right? Forget that that voice. It's dreamy. <laughs> Speaking of dreamy. Right? Right, Phil? Was it wasn't that voice yeah. just something else? Yeah, that guy is awesome. Awesome. Wow. I mean, Let me just listen. Just listen to this one again. We played it at the beginning before he came on. I'll play like 10 seconds. Just the sun is cold and rain is hot. I know. Been that way for all my time And forever on and goes Through the circle fast and slow I know I mean, it, that's that's Credence, right? Is that Credence? Clear? Yeah, that's what? Credence. The guy, he sounds, he sounds like he's actually the lead singer of the band. I want to know. He sounds Have like the lead. Seen the, seen rain. the rain. That's right, Phil. Calm Gosh. it down. Yeah, he was great. What a good man. Another great and show. So, you know, and so humble. Like, he's just like, you know, music is my life. Like, I, this is what I do. I might not make any money from it, but I'm just going to just go for it. And I just, I just, just. You gotta honor that. That's that's amazing. Yeah, you know, and people people you can tell they love what they want to do. They they pretty much sacrifice everything. I mean, he and his family are living in a twenty four foot RV, you know, because that's how much he loves his art. And they and they're loving life, man. Loving life. Yeah, yeah. And love, yep. God bless them. I'd love to do that, boy. Um 
was I forgot what I was going to say. Uh, totally went out of my head. <laughs> Phil, did you see? Did you see? Uh, Ma- oh, it was Matthew Willing. Matthew Willing. Oh yeah. He was talking about his brothers. Yeah. Um, yeah. One of his his older brother Chuck. After he left, he he commented on here, but I couldn't play it because we we're already in the song. Um, Chuck said, "It's <laughs> I'm the older Willing brother, <laughs> Chuck." Um, great interview, you guys. That was so much fun. Um, with his brother, he said he really is a big teddy bear. Um, <laughs> so yeah, his brother, I guess his brother was watching, but, um, cause listen, you know, you get a gig like that on a show produced by the rock and it's yeah, on NBC. Yeah. I mean, you know, you know, everybody's, everybody's all uh, psyched up for you. You know what? I think that's his big, I mean, that's his big moment. I mean, I think that show is going to go on for a couple of seasons. That's it. You know, yeah, it's going to be like, that, um, What's the one that Sophia Vergara with Modern Family? It's going to be like yeah, Modern, Modern Family. Family. It's going to be like Chris Rock show, you know? Listen, if I ever, what I'm going to do is if I ever, if my wife and I ever split up and I go on a dating site, I'm taking this picture. And I'm, putting, <laughs> it's, it's, really, I'm, I'm putting my face on this picture and I'm going to get a lot of swipe rights on that bad boy. Let me tell you something. He he. Can you imagine being tackled by him? <laughs> no. I would well, he was on the, Suk, he was on offensive tackle. So he was actually he was protecting the quarterback. So oh, thank okay. God, thank God for the other team that he wasn't coming at you full blast. No doubt. Holy moly, he's massive. <laughs> yeah. I mean, but, you got to uh, be if you're going to play Andre the Giant. Andre the Giant, 14 seasons in the NFL. I mean, he went to USC. I I I wanted to ask him. He said Junior Seau was his roommate at some point. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Junior was. Yeah, I wanted to ask. I missed that part. Hold on. I, you know what's funny? Can you guys see this? This is a picture I actually have right on my desk. Wow, yeah. Andre. That's My dad took us to the Westchester County Center when I was a kid. I know where that is. Right, right in Westchester, wow. the county center, little venue. And he took us to see wrestling, and Andre the Giant was there. Wow. And back, back when these were actually a thing where you had to get your film developed, I always kept this picture, and I took it out for a WWE thing the other day. But there's Andre. We were front row, and I took a picture of Andre at the county center. The guy was, I mean, the guy was huge. Huge. Yeah. I, I remember back in the 70s, I was reading an article about him, and, and they showed a photo of, of a beer can in his hand. Of course, it looked like a little toy. Right, right. <laughs> And he said when he would drink, he would take five or six cases, you know, just to be. Yeah, he was a big you know? drinker, Andre. <laughs> the big drinker. Um, Souk? I know. It's my time to go. Are you leaving? I got to go. Hey, you got to take care of the fam. Uh, I know I think, that. Yeah, I think there's, Great. I was telling Phil, I was telling uh, Scotty in the beginning of the thing, that there's like a seventh grade seminar going on for incoming seventh graders. Ah. Uh. It never ends, Phil. It never freaking oh, ends. I, 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 noon and night. Yeah, I went through it back in the day with my kiddos. I know exactly what you're doing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. All right, I'll, I'll let you go. I'm going to try and jump on it right now. Okay. Sue, great show this week. You. you got more coming up next week, babe. Goodbye, guys. Love you. Bye-bye. See you later. Philly kid? Yeah, man. So anyway, I've been uh, – I did a lot of yard work today, and uh, then I got a workout in. So needless to say – I am you yo boing yo boing. <laughs> I use this thing on my back for like thirty minutes before the show. Yeah, listen, I, I keep mine handy, bud. What color you got? The blue, blue. You got the blue, right? Yeah, yeah I, I had red, but uh, that was hijacked by one of my sons. I uh, let's see, what this week was just wild. I mean, what a great week we had. And next week, I'm just looking at next week's lineup. Holy cow! George Lopez on the tenth. Woo-hoo! Uh, Allison Williams, Dave Knoll is a creator of TV shows. A guy you may not know, but you'll know the shows. Um, Richard Kind, the actor, Richard Kind. Yeah, yeah, one of my favorites coming on the show. Nice. Um, so we got a great week coming up next week, and um, you know the the thing for the great thing for us is we just get to hang here and and BS with these celebrities and singers, Phil. I mean, it's, it's a beautiful thing. Who knew when you started this in your basement a year ago what it would yeah. it, it would be now? I know. It's unbelievable. It's, it's the show that entertainers around the world are striving to be a part striving. of. Striving. Phil, they're striving to be a part of this program. That's right. You know, <laughs> you know, you know how you know how people all over the world are, you know, they're striving to 
to yearning to come to America. Well, it's the same thing with the Suki and Scott show. Yes. Entertainers yes. from around the world are yearning. Give me to, a few more verbs, Phil. A couple more in there. Yearning, striving. Yearning, they're striving. I mean, <laughs> huddled masses are coming to the Suki and Scott show. I love it. Cherry yeah. Hetrick said she got a red Yobo. Cherry, nice. I hope you're enjoying your Yobo and you got your free shipping by just mentioning the Suki, Suki and Scott. Nice. Um, Good job, Cherry. Good job. Yeah, yeah. The uh, Listen, we've been doing this for a year. And... Uh, what can I tell you, man? It's just a lot of fun. The beautiful thing is no one has to go anywhere. If you want to come on the show, nobody has to go anywhere. You click your link and boom, you're in. It's beautiful. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. I almost, uh, I, I sent the link today to to my uh, a guy I know who's who works with The Rock at his production company. I said, hey, man, send the link to The Rock. If he can come on for three minutes just to surprise Matt, just send it and we'll have him on. I mean, <laughs> and he just, he got back to me late. He's like, Hey man, the rocks in Hawaii with his family. Oh, you know, he's not, and I was just like, all right, listen, we gave it a whirl. <laughs> yeah, It would have been awesome. You know, we gave it a whirl, but uh, Philly but, kid, you want to, uh, you want to sing it up for our, our last show of the week? Yeah. Let's do a little of, uh, mama, take this badge off of me. I can't use it anymore. It's getting dark, too dark to see. You know it feels like I'm knocking on heaven's door. Knock, knock, knocking on heaven's door. Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, oh. <laughs> knock, knock, knocking on heaven's door. Mama put my guns in the ground Cause I can't shoot them anymore That cold black cloud is coming down Feels like I'm knocking on heaven's door Take it, Scott. Knock, knock, knocking on heaven's door Whoa, whoa, hey, hey, yeah Knock, knock, knock it. We're doing a little mix of Guns N' Roses, right? Knock, yeah, knock, yeah. knock it on heaven's door. Hey, wow, hey, wow, hey, wow. hey, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> then uh, we can go right into uh, lay, lady, lay, lay across my big brass bed. Lay, lady, lay. I said, lay across my big brass bed. Whatever colors you have in your mind, I'll show them to you and you'll see them shine. Lay, lady, lay, lay across my big brass bed. Stay, lady, stay, stay with your man a while until the break of day. Let him see, make him smile. His clothes are dirty, but his hands are clean. And you're the best thing that he's ever seen. Stay, lady, stay. Stay with your man a while. Who sings that, Philly kid? Who sings that song? Yeah. Bob Dylan. Right, Dylan. Okay. The man. I like the Dylan song that he sang. Um, oh, yeah. I keep forgetting it. What song did he sing? Um, I can't remember. Oh, to make you feel my love. I'm going to shout across the storm with me. That's, that's a good song. A lot of folks sing that on a lot of the uh, singing shows. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I got a, a lady sent me a message saying, ask if I could sing this one on the show tonight. Which one? What'd she, what'd she want? It's going to take you way back, a little uh, Peter, Paul, and Mary. And oh, nice. Puff the magic dragon, <laughs> lived by the sea, frolicked in the autumn mist in a land called Honolulu. Little Jackie Paper loved that rascal Puff and brought him strings and sealing wax and other fancy stuff oh puff the magic dragon he lived by the sea frolicked in the autumn mist 
in a land called Honolulu. Oh, Puff the Magic Dragon, he lived by the sea. He frolicked in the autumn mist in a land called Honolulu. Where is Honolulu? Any idea? Oh. Hanali. Let's see if we can find out. Where is Hanali? Hanali. She's da she's dancing at uh, Ruby Tuesdays on uh, in Queens. <laughs> Next up on the stage, Hanali. <laughs> Mary Rivard uh, wants to hear Mr. Bojangles. <laughs> Bojangles. Let me pull Mr. up some Bojangles more. Mr. Bojangles dance. Isn't that Sammy Davis Jr.? I think I he think did do a version. He did one of those, right? Yeah, let's see here. I knew a man, Bojangles, and he danced for you in worn out shoes, silver hair, a ragged shirt, and baggy pants. The old soft shoe. He jumped so high, he jumped so high, and then he lightly touched down. Mr. Bojangles, Mr. Bojangles, Mr. Bojangles dance. Said his name. Him a spell a new girl. Take it, Scott. No, I, I I was on the next one. I met him in a cell in New Orleans. Ah. I was down and out. He looked to me to be the eyes of age as he spoke right out. He talked of life, talked of life. He laughed and clicked his heels and stepped. <laughs> that's, a, that's a tough tune. Yeah. I think it started out a little too high. Nitty gritty dirt band on that one. Yeah. Or uh, let's see. How about this one? That brings me, uh, you mentioned Sammy Davis Jr. Let's see. Uh, who can take a sunrise? Sprinkle it with dew, cover it with chocolate and a miracle or two. The candy man, oh, the candy man can. The candy man can, cause he mixes it with love and makes the world taste good. Take it, Scott. Who can take a rainbow, wrap it in a sign? Soak it in the sun and make a groovy lemon pie. The candy man can. The candy, candy man. man can. The candy man can cause he mixes it with love and makes the world taste good. Go, Philly. The candy man makes everything he bakes satisfying and delicious. Now you talk about your childhood wishes. You can't even eat the dishes. Oh, Scott. who could take tomorrow, dip it in a dream, separate the sorrow and collect up all the cream? The candy man can. Oh, the candy man can. The candy man can cause he mixes it with love and makes the world taste good. Candy man. The candy man can. <laughs> Remember the horror flick called The Candyman? Was it The Candy? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. The Candyman. Yeah. I remember yeah. that. Uh, there was a woman in there who was kind of, sort of a famous actress. Yeah, and uh, that, that started the old uh, nah, wife tale. Up. The old wife tale that if you uh, if you call Candyman three times in a row, then... Uh, what, what happens? Virginia Madsen. I, yeah, that's her. <laughs> what happens? He shows up. The Candyman? So, yeah. Three times in a row? Yes. Does the room have to be dark? Uh, I don't know. Let me see. Let's see if I can do a little research on that. Can we try it? I'm not. All right, Frank. Listen, Frank DeBona wants to know if you could sing truly to Christina, the love of his life. Truly. Truly by... Uh, I guess Lionel. Truly... Girl, tell me only this, that one. That I have your heart for always. Go, Philly kid. Girl, tell me only this. 
that I'll have your heart for always. And you want me by your side, whispering the words, I'll always love you and forever i will be your lover and i know if you really care i will always be there i need to tell you this there's no other love like your love and i as long as i live i'll give you all the joy my heart and soul can give let me hold you i need to have you near me and I feel with you in my arms, this love will last forever. Because I'm truly, truly in love with you, girl. I'm truly head over heels with your love. Truly. Nice. Man, those, well, two, I... those two are in love, I got to tell you. Yeah. I got to do look at their, uh, the, 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 uh, the profile picture and it's staring into each other's eyes, Philly kid. Sweet. Yeah. That's awesome. That's, Congratulations. That's young love, young love. Yaddy, da, da, de. Yeah. Phil, can you sing Amarillo by morning? Amarillo by morning. You know that song? Yeah, a little George Strait action. It's yeah. your love, just does something to me. Sends a shock right through me. Frankie DeBona says thank you. Yes, That'll sir. get Frank. Hopefully, that gets you a little action tonight. <laughs> or something, tells me, something tells me you didn't need that song to. Uh, but uh, all right, go ahead. You doing a little Amarillo? Yeah, a little George Strait. Amarillo by morning, up from San Antonio. Everything that I've got is just what I've got on. When that sun is high in that Texas sky, I'll be bucking at the county fair. Amarillo by morning, Amarillo, I'll be there. They took my saddle in Houston, broke my leg in Santa Fe, lost my wife and a girlfriend somewhere along the way. But I'll be looking for eight when they pull that gate, and I hope that judge ain't blind. Amarillo by morning, Amarillo's on my mind. Bump, bump, bump. Nice, my friend. Love, Nicely done. Love a little George Strait. You're a George Strait guy, huh? I would love to get that guy in the show. <laughs> Can you hey, work on it? If anybody knows George Strait, holler at him. Tell him yeah, to uh, come on. holler at him. Holler at that man. Get him on the show, for God's sake. Tell him to call Scott. Scott. Get on the Suki uh, and Scott show. What the heck are we waiting for? <laughs> Get some agents involved here. Phil, I was a little curious about this. I saw this today. You know, I'm a big potato chip guy. Yeah. And I was wondering, um, this just doesn't seem right. Um, new, bigger size looks a lot smaller than the older size. Yeah, that's a uh, hey. That uh, that was uh, obviously a man who who dreamt up, <laughs> who dreamt up that marketing ploy. I mean, is it a fatter? Is it a fatter package? And there's really more potato chips in the smaller one? Because you know, when you open them up, there's usually like half of its air. Yeah. So maybe this little one on the right 
has more potato chips in it, even though it's a smaller size. Right. right. Or they were sitting in a board meeting and said, hey, let's uh, let's put on there that it's a bigger <laughs> that it's that See it's if anybody bigger. notices. <laughs> Maybe so, people will believe it. You think anybody would notice this um, full black tarantula when you're, I'm looking clearly at a cockroach right there? <laughs> Scurries up to scurries up to look at the picture up top. You clearly that's a tarantula, <laughs> but what's in the actual packaging is a is a cockroach. Correct? Yeah. That's, eh. uh... I'm just checking. I'm just checking because I just want to make sure it's not me. And, and clearly, um, whoever put this billboard together, um, I think they I think they got it mixed up somewhere. No. Yeah, you know, that looks like, uh, or they could be advertising for a, a Chris Angel show. <laughs> I mean, you know, he's always pulling people apart. I mean, once you see that it's 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 the opposite of where it should be, you still walk away and leave it? Yeah, I guess. Somebody got fired that day. All right. And how about this shirt, Philly kid? Um, it says Asia, but clearly, That's clearly if you, if you know your map, that would be Africa right there. If I'm not mistaken, I, I'm pretty sure that's Africa, no? Yeah, I mean, I think uh, I think Toto would agree. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> well, you want to do a little Toto? I've left the range down in Africa. Oh, Gonna take some time to do the things we never had. <laughs> I see the dogs cry out in the night. They grow restless, longing for some solitary. Uh, it's not in the way that you hold me. Do, 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 do. It's not in the way you say you care. It's not in the way you've been treating my friends. It's not in the way you stayed till the end. It's not in the way you look or the things that you say that you'll do. Hold the line. Love, Love is isn't on. always on time. Bear, near, near, near. Hold, Hold the line. line. <laughs> Love isn't always on time. Love yeah. isn't always on time. Whoa, 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 whoa. That brings back my high school days. Yeah, that's like 1982, 83, I think, right? Oh, no, that was uh that was like 78, 79. Hold the line, Toto? Yeah, let's see. Let me... Maybe I'm I might be thinking Africa was Hold the line. What year was Hold the line? Let's see, Hold the line year. Hold the line. 1978 it was released. 70. What about Africa? Cuz I maybe that's what I'm thinking of. I know cuz I remember in high school when I finally got a car that song was on the radio all the time. Uh, 1982. 82. There you go. So I knew one of them was 82. Pam Payne in the house from Australia. Hello, Pam. Hi, Pam. Thanks for joining us from around to the land down under. Yeah, Thank the you. other side of the globe. Wow. Unbelievable. <laughs> Good day, mate. You know what we should do one night, Philly? I should take the link for the show and just post it on the page. And any of our viewers who wants to click in and jump on the show with us, they could just click the link and jump on the show. Oh, that would be an awesome idea. Wouldn't that be cool? I think I can only put 10 people up on the screen at once, if I'm not mistaken. Nice. But hey. I think that would be pretty funny. And they all, whoever just shows up, we just click them in. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We need to, <laughs> hey, we need to, you need to promo that and actually do it one night. <laughs> we really should, right? Yeah. And you just click in, and when you get on, you have to sing a little bit of a song, and then we just throw you right out. <laughs> Thanks for joining us. Yes. Thanks for singing. Good night, everybody. <laughs> um, you want to do a little finale to finish us off, a Phil solo finale? Yeah, let's do a little Johnny Cash and uh, Ring of Fire. Nice. <clears throat> Love is a burning thing. And it makes a fiery ring Bound by wild desire I fell into a ring of fire 
I fell into a burning ring of fire. I went down, 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 and the flames went higher. And it burns, burns, burns. The ring of fire, the ring of fire. I fell into a burning ring of fire. I went down, 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 and the flames went higher. And it burns, 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 the ring of fire. Oh, the ring of fire. Maybe I should try some Preparation H. <laughs> really cool you off. But, My wife has watched Walk the Line literally 100 times. Yeah, that's a good movie. But to my wife, jo Joaquin Phoenix is oh. Johnny Cash. Johnny Cash is not Johnny Cash. It's Joaquin Phoenix <laughs> is Johnny Cash. She likes the way he sings Johnny Cash better than Johnny Cash did. Yeah, that's kind of the way I felt a bit back in the, what, 78, 79 when uh, Buddy Holly movie came out and was played by, uh, oh, uh, ah, what's the guy's name? Oh, bu uh, Buddy Holly was played by um, yeah, uh, crazy dude. Not, um, yeah, not not Nick Nolte, the other guy. Oh, help help us out, fo uh, followers. I'll get it for you real quick. Look it up real quick, Phil. Yeah, it's not Nick Nolte, but the the other guy who was always like turned into a lunatic. A uh, Busey, Gary Busey, Gary Busey. Gary yeah, Busey. That's the way I felt for the longest. Uh, you know, Buddy Holly wasn't Buddy Holly. Gary Busey was Buddy Holly. Right, right, right. <laughs> yeah, no, that's that's the way she is about that movie. But uh, all right, my man, let's uh, let's take it home, Country Road. Okay. Good. You want to do Country Roads before we go? Heck that yeah. was one of our that was one of our fine duets, I believe. Yeah. Let's yeah. start her off. Uh, hold on. Let me, let me, let me get it up there. Almost heaven, right? Almost heaven, West Virginia, Blue Ridge Mountain, Shenandoah River. Life is old there, older than the trees, younger than the mountains, growing like the breeze. Come on, Phil. Country roads take me home to the place I belong. West Virginia, mountain mama, take me home. Country roads, go, Scott. All my memories gather round her. Miner's lady, stranger to blue water, dark and dusty, painted on the sky, misty taste of moonshine, teardrops in my eyes. Country roads take me home to the place I belong, West Virginia. Mountain mama, take me home, country roads, yeah. I hear her voice in the morning hour, she calls me. Radio reminds me of my home far away. Driving down the road, I get a feeling that I should have been home yesterday, oh, yesterday. Finish it up, Billy King. Country roads take me home to the place I belong. West Virginia, mountain mama, take me home, country roads. Country roads take me home to the place I belong. West Virginia, mountain mama, take me home. Country roads. Oh, yeah. That song always makes me wonder, what would a mountain mama look like? <laughs> mountain mama. Good hey, night, uh, sweetheart. Well, hell, it's time, time to, to go. go. Get on, on, on.
Good night, sweetheart. Well, it's time to go. We hate to leave you, but we really must say, oh, good night, sweetheart. Good night.